I thought I would just cover a few things to start with, and then we'll be glad to take some questions. I know that you know there's been a lot of stuff happen in the last uh, two or three weeks, so I thought I'd just kind of hit some of these. First of all, um, I want to take this opportunity to to thank Tim Fuller for his contributions uh, to our program. Today's his last day of work. And we certainly wish him well in his future endeavors. And I know that he'll he'll be successful. Uh, I know there'll be questions about the new coach, who the new coach will be. Uh, I've spent uh, a lot of time interviewing candidates, both in Indianapolis and also uh, uh, by phone. And uh, uh, feel good about the process. I don't really have a timetable. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm interviewing some guys that are involved with, with other jobs also, so uh, I can't really sit here and say, well, it's going to happen in a week or two weeks or whatever. Certainly want to get it done as quickly as possible, but uh, want to make sure we do it right. Uh, you know, what I'm looking for, um, kind of look, I'm looking for a guy that is a good coach, you know, a good um, – uh, good guy at scouting, game preparation. Uh, obviously, we need someone who's an excellent recruiter and um, trying, to, trying to get the right fit with the right area of the country we want to recruit. Um, someone who's good at skill development. <clears throat> I think that's going to be important with these young guys that we have. Uh, and then someone that will do a good job building relationships with the players, someone that uh, the players can, can uh, go to and, and uh, communicate with. Uh, again, I don't have a timetable. I wish I could tell you something, but I really can't. So uh, I'll keep you posted on that. Uh, I know there's been some roster changes, so I, and it's kind of why I wanted to wait a little bit here before we had this um, press conference. Um, the first one, and <clears throat> obviously the one is, that's uh, gained the most attention, is Jonathan Williams III. And uh, I want to start off by saying I enjoyed coaching Jonathan. Um, uh, he's, a, he's a great young man, a uh, wonderful human being. Um, I hope in some small way that I've helped him become a better player. Um, I do think he has improved as a player. Um, I want to wish him good luck. I wish him the best in his endeavors, and I know that he'll be successful. You know, so um, the question has come up about restriction of schools that he's going uh, he, that can contact him. Um, I would say this. I think some of you all have a list. I don't know if it's an accurate list. What, what we did is not uncommon at, um, at a high major university with a high profile player. And it's been done here before. It's been done in other sports. Um, all we did was basically restrict him from any potential opponent for the 2016-2017 season. And that's all I'm going to answer on that, so don't bother asking me any questions. Okay. Deuce Bellow. Deuce is um, on track to graduate in the summer. I think it was erroneously reported today that he was going to graduate in the spring. He's on track to graduate in the summer. Um, what we're doing with him is just kind of, I'm trying to work with him uh, to help him find the, the right graduate program that he would like to go to. And certainly we'll continue to do that. And uh, hopefully uh, things will work out good for him. Um, as far as any other transfers, at this point, I really uh, I don't have anything else to say on that. Um, I'm smart enough to know any time you, you have a season like we have that it is tough. It's hard on guys, and 
Uh, but right now, um, I don't have anything else really to say about that. The season was certainly disappointing. Um, but I, I do think that we did make improvement. You know, I've told the guys this several times. I thought we made improvement. But, you know, the other team improved too. So I think we have to continue to work and get better in the off season. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, anytime you have a season like this, I think you evaluate everything. You evaluate, you know, your entire program. It's my first year. So, you know, obviously I learned a lot. Um, but we'll, we'll continue to evaluate, you know, staff, players, what we eat, you know, where we stay, how we get there. What are we doing in practice? What are we doing in pre-practice? What are we doing in individual work? Stuff like that. I mean, we just kind of evaluate the whole program. Uh, I did want to talk a little bit about injuries because we had several. Some you didn't even know about. Uh, you're going to know about them now. Uh, the first one, you knew about this. Wes, Wes Clark um, with the dislocated elbow. He is, uh, I think he's making good progress. Um, Pat and the doctors are doing a great job. Uh, as far as coming back, I would guess it would be hopefully by summer, sometime this summer, or maybe even by the beginning of summer, he'll be back. Uh, Techie Gil Caesar uh, played most of the year with a bad back, and um, uh, I'm really proud of him. By the way, he played played uh, played through a lot. I um, think he's getting better. He's, he's, we're kind of doing some preventative rehab on his back, and uh, I think in time he'll, he'll get strengthened in his core, and uh, it, it, hopefully he'll be pain-free here in a year or, or by next, uh, next season. Uh, Ryan Rosberg played probably the last eight to ten games with a broken finger um, on his right hand. And so uh, – I don't know how many of you guys have ever played with a broken finger, but it's not easy. And uh, never complain. Just kept going out there every night and doing the best he could. So, um, and then Keanu, you guys saw that bandage on his wrist. Uh, he actually had a torn ligament in his wrist, uh, probably for at least half the year. And. Uh, um, he had successful surgery a few weeks ago, and he's probably going to be three to six months rehabilitation. So I don't say that to make excuses. I uh, just say that as a matter of fact that I mean, we did have some guys that played through injuries. Um, I'm not sure it would have made a huge difference, but um, certainly I, I appreciate those guys playing when they were hurt. Uh, I kind of wanted to – just lay out maybe a few things as far as <clears throat> what we're looking at in the off season, as far as uh, um, kind of a plan maybe that uh, as I've sat down and talked with our staff and and uh, trying to think about what we need to do going forward to try to support I think our value our core values and our department core values. Uh, the first thing I th and, and these aren't really in any order. Um, um, these are just kind of five or six things that, that um, as, as I look back, things we need to work on. Not that we didn't this year, but things we need to continue to improve upon. Um, the first thing is I think, you know, you guys watch this play a lot, our strength and conditioning combined with uh, nutrition. You know, we have some great people here at the university that uh, – you know, we obviously feel very good about Matt Herring, our strength coach. Um, you know, he and I have visited about what we need to do in that, that respect. And obviously, it's get stronger. Some guys need to get stronger. Um, and then nutrition-wise, you know, we have a, a, a great nutritionist and nutrition program and, you know, teaching guys to eat the right foods and you know if they want to gain weight what you need to eat and, and if you want to lose weight um, how you need to do that too 
some of us in this room could probably use that, including me. Um, individual development, you know, just, you know, we, you know, I had a guy write me a letter the other day, told me to quit making excuses because we're young. Well, sorry, whoever that guy was, you know, we are young. So, you know, we do need to continue to develop our guys. I think there it's, it's, um, and we've done that and we're doing that, but I think individual development is really going to be important. Individual skill development. Okay. Um, the next thing I'd written down here was chemistry, team chemistry. Um, not sure it was the best. Um, again, I think um, we didn't have that true leader, and that's not. I'm not knocking anybody. I'm not knocking anybody. I'm just saying we just didn't have that true leadership guy that maybe we needed as a team. Um, I'm hopeful with younger guys getting older, we'll be able to develop that. And maybe uh, we as a coaching staff can do a better job of helping develop leaders or helping develop better chemistry. Um, staff organization, alignment, efficiency. Um, you know, I would anticipate tweaking some duties within our staff uh, to enhance maybe our strengths uh, as individuals. And, you know, that probably is going to, be determined later as, as we see who, who our new uh, uh, assistant coach will be. Uh, I think we need to continue our emphasis on uh, uh, strong academic achievement. And uh, we have a great academic support system here at the university. And you know, our guys are doing a good job, but we need to continue to, to get better in that respect. Um, you know, the idea is to graduate, and I can say Keanu Post is going to graduate. I'm very proud of him, and as I said earlier, I, it, it, I think Deuce sh should graduate by the end of the summer. And then the last thing is, is just recruiting, and, and maybe that should be the first thing, but <clears throat> as I said, these are in no particular order. Just recruiting efficiency. Um, you know, I think we need to continue to strengthen our visibility here in the in this part of the country, uh, but also, you know, in, in order to be successful at this level, you have to recruit nationally. So um, that's kind of a, a goal that we want to we want to do. And then, depending on who we hire, maybe a a, a little realignment of who's recruiting where, uh, as far as parts of the country and and. Uh, um, you know, which guys are recruiting which areas, but we'll kind of see how that goes, again, depending on who we hire. Um, lastly, I want to thank, uh, I know we got some questions. I want to thank you guys for your coverage this year. I know it hasn't always probably been the most enjoyable day of your life, but I remain very uh, excited and committed to, to – uh, um, getting Missouri basketball back to where we're used to seeing it. And it's not going to be easy, but um, um, I obviously think it can be done. And then this will be the last time I think we'll be together. Um, I do want to thank Mike Alden as he retires uh, here in a few weeks for uh, giving me this opportunity. And uh, I know that I won't probably see you guys but certainly appreciate the chance to to be the coach at Missouri having said that <laughs> no questions okay no anybody have a is that right do we go ahead and go to questions okay Well, I think you've got to learn from it. I learned a lot. Um, um, there's there's some things in there you don't want to do again. <laughs> you don't want to do again. Uh, I don't know what they are off the top of my head, but um, I, I think that you just have to learn 
from, uh, you know, when, when I looked at this team at the beginning of the year, not having much um, background at, at, in the SEC, you know, I, you know, how many games could this team win? Well, you know, you were, you know, you hope you win them all, but I, and being realistic, you hope you could, you know, win 15 games or, you know, somewhere between 10 and 15 games. And, um, you know, we didn't get there, but, um, you know, I, I think the main thing by is you just got to learn. You got to, I, I think, I think our guys have learned a lot. You know, it's hard when you're young and you lose. What What's really hard is when you go out there every day and you, you, um, you know, you practice and you say, you know, if you do this, we're going to win, you know. And then when you don't win, it's it's that's hard. So it's hard on coaches. It's hard on fans, you know. It's hard on you guys. But it is what it is, you know. It, 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 I'm not ashamed of anything. I mean, we, we, we worked hard. Um, I think we all learned. And uh, hopefully – we learned well, and we can build on on some of our mistakes. Coach, what did Jonathan and Deuce say to you when they, they told you they were going to transfer? Uh, both those conversations are both personal between me and them. Thanks, so. though. Same question I would have asked. You had mentioned earlier about team chemistry. There were some comments from Jonathan's dad about not fitting in and, and not blending well chemistry wise. You know, was that a case of, was that kind of a red flag for you? <laughs> no, I, I I knew this team didn't have great chemistry. Okay, I knew that, and again, with all apologies to the guy that wrote me the letter and told me to quit talking about being young because we had so many young guys <clears throat> and, and so many guys that were new to the program. Um, so I knew that I knew the team chemistry would be a challenge, especially if you weren't successful. And I think, I think that's where um, probably the issues came that, you know, we, we, we struggled in the, in the league and we didn't win you know, we we went a long time without winning games, and so I think that's that's probably uh, that's probably where that came from. Tim, as you go forward with with Jonathan's departure, something you were prepared for, and you had to change a little bit now how you were recruiting these next couple months. Mm, I would, you know, uh, when again when you have a season like we have, you kind of. Uh, you have many, many contingency plans. Um, certainly, I was hopeful that that Jonathan wouldn't transfer because I, I think not only he's he's a good basketball player, but he's a great guy. You know, um, to be candid, we were a little heavy at that spot anyway. I mean, we had you know we we had three or four guys there, so we did have to change some things up. You know, we we uh, um, we had to kind of go back and recruit some other guys, some bigger guys. But um, yeah, I'd say yeah, we had to change. We changed a little bit. You know, you think of this last year at this time, you, you know, was probably a lot of optimism, but a lot of mystery. Now you've had a pretty rough season, a little more clarity. I mean, is is it? Good in a sense to know you have a better sense of what you need to get at, get after, what's what's missing, or is that last year at this time? I just won a national championship and I was on the Katy Trail riding my bicycle between Calhoun and Windsor. Literally right about now. Probably right about now, yeah. I probably wasn't working, you know. <laughs> no. Um Yeah, I mean the you know, I think that that um, this year has taught me a lot, as it as it does 
I think any coach who doesn't learn something new every day is probably, you know, standing still. So um, it has brought some clarity to me as to what we need to do with this program as far as um, what I need to do and, and you know, going forward. Uh, you know, I, I got this job uh, end of April, 1st of May, which is a little bit probably late, late, you know. And so, you know, we really had to hurry recruiting. We really had to sign some guys quick, and and um, uh, everything went pretty fast. So um, I'm looking forward to, to slowing down a little bit and, and, and maybe spending more time with the players and, and uh, more time maybe uh, preparation for next year. You mentioned a couple of times you learned a lot from this year. What, what are the, the big two or three lessons? I learned, I learned probably um, um, I, think, I think when you, you – this job requires a um, – inordinate amount of problem solving and time uh, time management and dependability on your staff so I think I learned all that I think I learned that I have to delegate more to my staff um, and they have to be uh, not that they weren't but I mean they have to be um, you know resp more responsible maybe or, or resp I don't want to say they weren't just they just have to be responsible um, and then, and then, you know, I learned, you know, I think the, the, um, coaching and, and game preparation, um, I really enjoy and I want to be able to do it more than I was this year than I, than I was able to. Well, I think, yeah, I think they can. Uh, you know, I'm hopeful that they'll stay together. Uh, and, and and don't don't read into this. I'm not I'm not I'm not thinking anybody's going to leave. But I also know that they're young they're young guys, and um, you know, I, uh, their people always get in their ears too so you know in my conversations they've been very positive now whether or not that continues we'll see time will tell but I do think if they would stay together uh, I think they could be really um, a, a, a special group of guys and and they've you know they've done well here in the in the postseason you know we've only been working out a couple weeks now I gave them I actually gave them two and a half weeks off uh, spring break kind of fell in between it or fell at the end of it so they ended up with two and a half weeks off so yeah I, I think we have a good core you know I'm excited about the guys we've signed I'm excited about the the recruits that we're involved with um, um, so I mean I'm optimistic about the future I, I you know I've, I've continued to try to you know, you guys are probably sick of this but I've seen this a lot lately uh, to build a culture or create a culture. And while I don't think we were 100% successful in that, I do think we made some progress in putting together the type of program we want to have. Kevin, have you had a chance to uh, meet individually with Mac Rhodes yet? And if so, I have. what's kind of been your takeaway from those discussions? Um, I have. I've had uh, several meetings with, with, uh, with Mac and then, I actually had a chance to sit down with him in Indianapolis, have dinner with him and, and uh, Mike and, and some other people. Uh, very impressed. Um, uh, I think that uh, he'd be a great fit for, for the University of Missouri. Um, you, you know, when you, when you, uh, you know, you, when you know you're going to have a new boss, you immediately turn to guys fellow coaches you know so you know I immediately picked the phone up and called some fellow coaches and um, uh, they were all just really positive
positive about him, and I, I can see why. You know, I think he'll be, um, I think he'll be a great addition to continue. You know what Mike has started here over the past 17 years. I think it'll be a great, um, a great transition. Are you confident that in regards to your program that he comes in understanding the situation you were in and willing to give you the time to fix it? Yeah, we've talked about that. So, yeah, I'm. I'm I think he understands. Jim, you kind of mentioned that letter that you got. I'm sure it wasn't the only one you got. But I no, <laughs> no, man. You haven't had a lot of reasons for anyone to be negative about you for a long time. I mean, did that knock you back a little this year, um, or does it, you let that stuff slide up your back, or kind of what? You know, I used to be a, uh, I used to be a, uh, a big sports talk radio guy. I mean, I would listen. I don't know if I told you guys this story, but. You know, I lived in Warrensburg. I'm driving. I go to Kansas City a lot to watch games and stuff. I'm driving. I'm listening to sports talk radio, and they're talking about Bill Self and Bruce Weber and Fred Hoiberg and Kareem Richardson or whoever. And so this year I happened to be driving. This was early on, but it was it was late enough that, you know, there was already some talk. I happen to be driving up there, and I'm listening, and they're talking about Bill Self, and they're talking about these guys. All of a sudden, they were talking about me. So I quit listening to sports talk radio. I don't listen to sports talk radio anymore, although I have great admiration for the for the people in that, that profession, and I enjoy bantering with them. Um, apologetically, I don't read the newspaper very much either. My wife actually reads it and then tells me if I can read it. So... Uh, um, so I've led a lot of it. I, I haven't heard a lot of it, to be honest with you. But you know what, Joe? It, I mean, some of it's justified. Criticism, I understand that. That's that's part of it. Um, um, so I've kind of let it slide. I don't like. I don't know everything that's going on. You know, like like you guys are talking about. Um, certain subjects and if it wasn't for him I, I wouldn't know you know what's what's really going on and um, I just think that's better okay Jim, to that point a little bit I mean what about the question of have you internalized the stress of this I mean how are you dealing with that it obviously means as much to you or more than it would to anybody I mean I think it's probably been hard on you yeah yeah yeah, it has been. I mean, it you know because um, I've said this a lot. I never had a year like this. Oh, I did. I did. I, I told. I may have told you guys the story when I was at Baylor. We we were five and twenty-two one year, but I was sitting over here. You know, the name tag was up here and it was misspelled, and it didn't matter who I was. It said Gene Iba up here, and over here was you know tall guy, and so. Yeah, that that that's hard. It, it, but you know why it's hard? It it's hard because um, you know this is uh, this is my school, you know, and um, I think you don't you don't ever want to let anybody down, and so. But 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 while it's hard, I think it makes you more determined. You know, so um, internalizing it, I got great people around me. I do. I got, I got, my staff's been good. Um, you know, uh, Patrick's been good. Brian's picked up where Doug left off. And um, so it's, it's, those people have all been, been helpful. A little bit. I got on one day, man. It was like so muddy, you wouldn't believe it. it uh, um, but yeah, I, I actually was on it this weekend a little bit. Tim Ben Howland, Rick Barnes, Avery Johnson. Just your thoughts on? <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, great coaches. I mean, three guys that uh, have had great experiences, have done great at their previous stops, and um, certainly a. A great challenge for me, but exciting for me to be able to coach against these guys. And, 
you know, I don't know Ben Hallen. I don't know Avery Johnson, but you know, I know Rick Barnes from my days at the Big 12, and he was always a very helpful, helpful coach to me when I was in the administrative role and uh, had the chance to spend a little bit of time with him. So great coaches. Uh, I think it speaks to our league. I think, you know, our league uh, making that commitment and um, and hiring that type of coach. So, uh, um, you know, I think we had a pretty good year as a league. And, you know, now I think we'll just get better. Can we is there anything that wasn't working with Tim in contrast to philosophy with what you're doing? Is, is there what? Is there any kind of contrast in philosophies, things that weren't working out with, with Tim? Not really, no. I'm not going to address that. I said I wasn't going to, so I'm not going to. That's a personnel decision. One of the criticisms has been that over the last three or four years, there really haven't been a plan. It's, it's a flashy one, hit the new, no substance. What's the plan going forward for you as far as recruiting needs as opposed to a really big flash? Well, I, I think I think that what we have to do at Missouri is, is, and, and every school has to do this. I think they have to know who they can recruit, you know, who, who fits the University of Missouri. And I'm, I'm not saying that to. I, I think you have to know who you can successfully recruit and then recruit those people. And that's. I think that's what we're trying to do. You know, we're trying to to uh, recruit guys that that uh, fit into our program, guys that you know hopefully want to be here, and guys that we can develop in, into good players. And, and I'm not saying we don't want the five star guy. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying we have to know who we can recruit. I, I think your question's really good. I, don't, I can't talk about him because he hasn't signed yet, right? I couldn't talk about him. So um, I think, I think, but but in generalities, I think that um, if you have a a guy that you have a connection to, then you know I think that's a safe um, or, or that's a legitimate reason to recruit them. You can. You figure that out. You got that. Yeah. I, I can't talk about the kid, though. I don't want to get in trouble. Anybody else have any questions? Uh, well, we'll, we'll um, we got about three or four weeks left of school. So what we're doing now is we're lifting weights four days a week, which we need to. Uh, we're doing workouts, uh, more individual skill stuff. For, you can only have four guys max at a time. Uh, we do those three days a week, 40 minutes per session. Um, and then, and then uh, when school ends, they'll have, I think they maybe have three weeks off. And then we'll come back in June and uh, we'll start up. You can do a little bit more team stuff. It's the Mizzou football spring game Saturday, April 18th at 4 p.m. For tickets to the spring game, log on to mutigers.com and print off your online ticket. That plus a donation of one canned food item for the Central and Northeast Missouri Food Bank gets you admission to the game.